Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Rocket Monday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at geostationary orbit. So let's dive right into it. Now, this is basically the geostationary orbit is a type of geosynchronous orbit. So you must uh, hear this sort of word being used interchangeably. However, they are two separate things. So you have to understand it in a, such a way like every square is a rectangle, but not every rectangle is a square. It's like that. So you have to understand geosynchronous means exactly what it says is uh, you are being in sync with earth basically your orbit is happening exactly at 23 hours 56 minutes 4 seconds now if you are not familiar with that exact number it's what we call sidereal day basically this is why we have leap uh, leap years just to compensate for that 24 hour orbital period is not exact so this is the exact time so once you are orbiting at this exact rate 20, uh, 23 hours 56 minutes 4 seconds you end up in a stationary position now at the beginning you won't end up in a stationary position you will be ending up in a sync position where you are sync geo synchronous you are in sync basically you're gonna be like uh, rotating with her so you can have a scenario where you are like okay i'm looking up but the satellite is crossing my orb uh, like my field of view two times per day or one times per day or this exact time it will cross so these sort of opportunity comes up it's synced because like uh, it will not go from okay today i saw it one time uh, tomorrow i'm gonna see it two times th uh, thursday it's not changing that that is why we call it sync that's the core word syncness it's completely in sync with earth so to give an even simpler understanding is basically geo uh, stationary orbit is basically directly parallel to equator however geo synchronous orbit G, uh, geo basically that is a uh, bit slanted now if you want to go to geo stationary i told you like uh, both are in sync both are taking exactly 23 hours 56 minutes and 4 seconds how do you make sure you become from geo synchronous to geo stationary you go down in latitude basically you go to zero degree you go to equator now in equator you have to be exactly at the band of 35000 kilometers 786 kilometer so basically the uh, you have to be at this exact band the be mindful the band is very narrow you can't have satellite even a bit up or bit less if you go a bit up you ended up in what we classify as geo uh, graveyard orbit if you are below what we call as meo you can check my last episode on that so you have to understand it is a very narrow band you have a lot of uh, options in terms of orbit when you are talking about geo synchronous not stationary every geo stationary is geo synchronous but not every geo synchronous is geo stationary so you want geo synchronous or geo stationary we generally want geo stationary this video is about geo stationary so the first time we ever successfully managed to go there and use anything practically was Syncon 3 on uh, basically August 19, 1964. So it's kind of old time, like we wanted to reach there. Now to give a context of it, like how far apart that is, that 35,000 kilometer, it's like this image should help you understand that. It's like we are like a very tiny center here, the blue center, and this whole band, basically multiple Earths will fit in be, be, uh, below the geostationary belt. So you have to understand it's very far. It's further than the diameter of Earth. Now, then you have to understand this. If it's that far, why the heck we want to use it? Well, this is the backbone. Geostationary satellites are the backbone of our modern satellite communication. Now, because it provides what we call a planet-wide coverage, you can have only three satellites and you can cover the entirety of Earth. Basically, each satellite uh, giving you, uh, taking care of 120 degree of uh, Earth. So, and if you have four, you will get, of course, you will get uh, like much denser coverage, but three is more than good enough. Like in three, you can take care of things. So that is why uh, we want this. And on top of that, it's not about coverage. Coverage itself can be taken care of by, let's say, LEO satellites also, because it's, you know, going above some place. But you also get what we call uh, non-tracking. Basically, you don't need a dish to follow something. Like there are many satellites that, uh, especially in uh, MEO constellation, basically medium Earth orbit constellation, they uh, orbit in such a way that you have to track it. Like you have to track it. Your satellite dish will be following it. In this geostationary, you don't have to do anything. You just will know this exact place put it there done like you don't have to do anything after that and uh, in terms of power like uh, how the satellite gets power it gets power from what we call solar panels now everything is good and dandy with solar panel but you have to understand the closer you are to earth let's say you are as close to leo basically low earth orbit and uh, around 500 kilometer you are going through earth's shadow for like almost uh, um, half a day basically your 20 uh, like your orbit is let's say 20 minute 10 minute will be in shadow or let's say your orbit is 40 minutes 20 minute will. like half half is in shadow however once you start to 
go further and further and further away the time you spent and the night side basically in the shadow of earth that decreases so when you are talking about geostationary because it's so far that uh, when satellite is orbiting it's mostly in the sunlight basically it will go uh, into the sun shade for bare minimum of one hour and in some scenarios if the orbit is slanted a little bit it will never go into shadow so understand that so that also means the batteries and everything you have in your satellite also only needs to be like good enough for one to two hours rather than like you know half of the time basically in leo you have to have battery power for 50 percent of the operation time here you have to have like battery for only a few minutes so that is also very helpful to make a big powerful satellite because you will get constant power from the solar panel so that's also awesome this is why it is our backbone of communication However, you have to understand this, even though this is in space, there is very limited space in this. This is just a very small band. Like I told you, if the biggest orbit we have is Mio, basically Mio is very, very thick band. You can have thousands of satellites in this. It's completely opposite. This is the narrowest band possible. Like there is only certain number of slot and the slot is like barely six to eight hundred slots. It's not that you can't pack satellites, but you, we also have to think about uh, interference communication. Like basically, uh, if satellites are close to each other and uh, ground station is trying to beam signal to each other, it will end up, uh, you know, interfering with either that uh, causes a signal degradation and a hell lot of issues. So for that reason, you, there is a certain number of band. So this band itself, as you can see, it's like completely filled completely fill everybody is fighting for this band you can't just go and like uh, let's say in leo the amount of regulation that you have to go through is very little now when you're talking about this this is not only regulated very heavily this is also national owned so basically if you are living in america you will get uh, the band let's say from uh, 135 degree west to 90 degree west will be like given to you like you are in america you must put something here let's say you are somewhere in india you will get completely different band like let's say 45 degree east to 90 degree east so as you can see like these are nationally owned system this is not something that you can just go you know on this it is nationally owned system and it is very uh, heavily debated content like the reason why you can't have like let's say you are an american company and you want to put something above india is that you are not gonna be able to give coverage to basically America the coverage is very static so even though you can put three satellites that first three satellite was lucky because after right now if you want to do something like that let's say I want to do international let's say planet-wide uh, TV broadcast you you are not allowed to do that let's say you are in America okay you got the uh, uh, you know license to put it in uh, American airspace will you get the license to put it in Indian airspace or Russian airspace maybe maybe not so you have to understand this, this is very serious business this is uh, what we call country owned not only this is like a the amount of space is very limited simply because of that perfect precise band it's also like you know countries uh, heavily handle this and control it debate it like it's, it's a complete nightmare so hilariously enough in space we don't have enough space for this so that's the first practical issues second there is physics aspect of this now that physics aspect is latency basically if you want to do satellite internet communication forget about it now it's not does not mean that we can't have it we have satellite communication that relies on geostationary but the latency is almost half a second basically it's 30,000 kilometer plus distance you have to like okay you send a signal 30,000 plus 30,000 to ground station then 30,000 to the satellite then 30,000 to me so you can understand 30 30 30 30 it takes almost half second so that latency is so bad that most security system will flat out block uh, block the access because this thing is being tampered with so if you try to do card processing unless your bank knows that this is a geostationary connection they will flat out block it for safety reasons so it's practically useless for uh, anything you can't even make a phone call on that yeah you can transfer file but it will take very large amount of time now on top of that the signal is also very weak to understand this you must understand inverse square law you can check my video here inverse square law so on you have latency then you have to worry about the signal is very weak on top of that it's practically useless in high altitude latitude basically so what does that mean so in equator you're gonna get perfect things but as you go up and up up and let's say 50 degree uh, in latitude you are gonna start getting very weak signal because earth is a sphere so your satellite this will be start aiming towards the horizon so at some point it will be in uh, going through so much atmosphere and so much uh, uh, basically surface of the earth itself it will be completely blocked so let's say you are in Russia 
जियो स्टेशन इज नो लॉन्गर यूजफुल फॉर दैट फॉर इन रशिया पीपल यूज वॉट वी कॉल जियो सिंकनस दैट्स वाई आई वॉज क्लैरिफाइंग दैट इन द फर्स्ट लाइट इन रशिया यू हैव टू यूज जियो सिंकनस बिकॉज जियो स्टेशन ही सिंपली वॉन्ट रीच यू बिकॉज यू आर इन वॉट वी कॉल एज मिड लैटिट्यूड टू हाई लैटिट्यूड जियो स्टेशन ही यूज लेस दैट नाउ लेट यू आर इन अफ्रीका समवेयर हियर ऑसम जियो स्टेशन इज परफेक्ट फॉर इंडिया परफेक्ट अमेरिका बिट if he but is still still it is manageable it's not very difficult for them it is manageable but russia starts from medium and goes to high latitude so they have to have what we call geosynchronous now that they have to have multiple satellite to get a continuous coverage they can't have one satellite and take care of their whole nation they have multiple satellite just to take care of one spot so these are the physics aspect of it you can't change this so let's say you are in a country like australia thankfully australia is like mostly uh, below what we call uh, mid latitude so it can be taken care of but let's say you are in south pole or north pole forget about it geo stationary you will never be able to receive any communication from it that is the nature of this band it's the this is physics limit you can't do anything you can't just have megawatts of power in your transmitter and receiver nothing is going to happen on top of that there is what we call graveyard orbit i told you like once you have geostationary orbit the fact with this is this is a very high energy orbit basically the amount of energy you have to put into your satellite to reach here it's very high the delta v as they call like the amount of energy speed change you have to add to it it's very high to orbit here you, you don't need that much energy so that's why rockets are always classified at uh, 20 tons to leo basically 20 ton to low earth orbit but that same rocket that can send 20 ton does not mean it can send 20 tons to geostationary in geostationary generally it's half understand there is no atmosphere but still that happens and it could take very long time let's say to low earth orbit you going to reach in 10 minutes just as you going to reach in 5 hours so you have to understand like the amount of energy needed to go to geostationary is very high on top of that this is very narrow band on top of that it's very limited like you can't just put satellite and forget about it so what do people do once the satellite runs out of basically useful life is we fire rocket engines on the satellite itself and then we put it transfer orbit then do a circulating burn and then put it in graveyard orbit reason for that is like in in when you are talking about rocket engines you talk about meters per second basically 5 meters per second or 10 meters per second if you want to drop it let's say something in geo station you want to drop it to earth the amount of energy you have to take away from it is too so much basically you need big rockets basically the rocket same size you put it up there so that's practically impossible and on top of that let's say you had some magical rocket that allowed that kind of power in a small satellite the problem becomes because they are going through uh, this band and there is meo and leo so there the fact of collision becomes a uh, very high you may end up colliding with something else to safely handle the situation we simply say okay just go above so once you uh, reach into what we call graveyard orbit now the orbit time is like around 30 to 35 uh, hours per uh, like per orbit takes that long but this orbit is very stable because the atmospheric drag is negligible and it's so far above that you don't have to worry about so understand this to drop down you have to remove upwards of 100 to 200 meter per second to go up you only have to add 5 to 10 meters per second that's why we do this graveyard or because going down you are endangering everything that is down below on top of that you don't have enough energy to do that so that's why we have graveyard orbit so if you see something like this this sort of satellite diagram this very thick band is what we call geostationary the band that is like elliptical to it that's geosynchronous and everything above that is what we call graveyard orbit graveyard orbit is the last useful orbit we have like in graveyard orbit almost all defunct satellite that is in the used to be some time in geostationary is now there now this uh, basically the transfer orbit that we do in graveyard orbit supposed to be stable for 50000 years unless solar winds picks up very dramatically and then starts to pushing down satellite other than that this is a very safe place to put our junk basically we are just like yeah just go there don't ever come back just go there hopefully so This was my presentation on geostationary. I hope you liked it or learned from it. In that case, please leave a like. If you didn't, don't worry about it. You can dislike it. I would urge you to leave a comment and click the ad shown in this video. That will directly help me. And uh, benefit of commenting also is I reply to all of them. Please subscribe. Press the bell icon if you are free. And as always, thanks for watching.